So as part of this case swap in this uh, first gen CRX, we need a K-series adapter harness. And guess what? Nobody makes one. Welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get school. Well, I've been building K-series uh, adapter harnesses since about 2002. And uh, I am now gonna build one for this particular car. Uh, and I thought, what the heck? I will show you guys how to make an adapter harness as well. Now this particular harness I've been making for years, it'll work on not only this car, but it'll also work on the Civic all the way up to the year 2000. It will also work on the 86 Integra all the way up to the year 2001. So this will be a universal Honda K-Series wiring harness. The only thing you're gonna to have to do is make sure it gets connected to all the right places and it'll work just like all the other adapter harnesses you can buy. Anyway, uh, we have four plugs we're gonna be connecting. We have our air fuel relay plug. We have the C101 plug that interfaces between the RSX harness and the adapter harness. By the way, we're actually using a CRV harness that has been modified to be like a manual RSX harness. Uh, this is the ECU E-plug. We'll be connecting that well with all the necessary wiring. And then last, our air fuel ratio sensor plug. So uh, what I have done is uh, I've written up some instructions on how to do it. I'm gonna kind of go over them as I do this, make sure they're all correct. And if they are, I'll go ahead and publish these on the VTech Academy website so that you can download it. Once again, this is going to be a universal Honda K-Series adapter harness. All right. To start with, I pre-cut a bunch of wires uh, to go with the kit. Uh, if you notice here, I have uh, wire colors, sizes, lengths, and uh, what their function is. And uh, we're gonna, right now, crimp the correct ends on to uh, our wire so that we can terminate them inside the C101 plug. So, I should have laid all these out. We can fast forward through this. Why don't you listen to some music while I do this? Okay, I've straightened them all out. So now we're just gonna kind of go down the list and uh, attach each wire, crimp it with its connector and then insert it into the C101 plug. Now the C101 plug, when you are wiring something and you need to know how the C101 plug works, basically this particular one is uh, a male C101 connector. So typically you would look at it in the face and the numbers go from left to right, one, two, three, 10 across the top and 10 across the bottom. Uh, since I'm gonna be plugging the wires in from the rear, it'll be the opposite of that with one at the right and 10 at the left and then 11 and then 20 on this side. So uh, it's important that you understand that uh, there is a retaining clip that goes in when you plug these two connectors together that you always want facing up. And then again, left to right on the front side with the prongs facing you. And then uh, if, uh, which of course, when you're putting the wires in that makes it opposite. So it's gonna go from right to left. Starting off with our green white wire. Now, first thing we need to do is to crimp on our terminal. To do that, we're gonna need to strip a piece of the wire that's gonna be long enough that this center section right here, it extends completely out the other side. So, strip that back, test it to make sure it reaches all the way through. Then we grab our crimpers. Sometimes I have to pinch it down a little bit ahead of time. And then, crimp it. You should do that, you should always test it. Give it a good pull, make sure it doesn't come apart. 
If you need to tighten it up a little bit more, tighten it up. Now the second crimp. That sinks into the wire casing. All right, and now, according to our instructions, we're gonna put it in hole number one. That's the one on this far left. So we come in from the back. You'll hear it click into place. That is in there. One down, about 11 to go. By the way, this is our backup lights. Not quite enough. Quite enough. The first two wires right here, there's green white wire and there's yellow wire. These are actually the backup light wires. So uh, these come from the transmission up to the C101 plug and from here, they're gonna go to uh, the backup lights. So on our CRX, I'm not really sure where those wires are. Probably one of the uh, plugs on the uh, passenger side of the car. Uh, but we'll have to determine that as we go along. Uh, it kind of varies. For instance, uh, on some cars it's on the driver's side and other cars it's on the passenger side. Uh, I haven't really looked to see where it is on this particular car, so I'm just making it about 72 inches long so that I can uh, then cut it down to the right length that it needs to be. Uh, by the way, we'll put that information in the, uh, in the notes when we make the notes. So. Uh, you're not going to need to make it 72 inches long. It probably can be considerably shorter. Uh, I just have it too long right now so that we have something to work with. All right, so this next is a white green wire. This is the vehicle speed sensor. Now, this is kind of interesting on this car. On a 85 to 7 uh, CRX SI, there is no vehicle speed sensor. I'll have to show you what we've done. You actually have to modify the speedometer in the instrument cluster in order to get the vehicle speed sensor. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna feed the speedometer with a cable, just like you would on an 88 to 91 Civic, and then with some wiring changes at the actual dash, where there's actually, the mechanics are in there in order to give a vehicle speed pulse, they're just not normally uh, activated. Uh, they only use it generally for the HF model CRX, so um, it's kind of a vestigial organ, if you will, uh, something they put in there for the HF, but they don't use it for the SI. Uh, they didn't really use uh, vehicle speed sensors um, until the 88 year uh, car. So uh, we'll talk more about that when we actually do the connection in the car. We'll show you what we modified in order to get it to work in the car. Okay, next would be yellow green, and that is our water temp sensor. So we are going to add a water temp sensor into the engine harness because we're going to put a water temperature sensor on the actual engine. Normally, water temp in a case there's an engine is actually communicated to the dash via uh, CAN communication. So uh, like a, just a local area network type of setup. On the earlier model Hondas, all the way up until 2000, the water temp sensor was actually a single wire temperature sensor that's on the head of the, of the engine. So uh, we're gonna add that to our K-Series engine, and uh, that's gonna connect to this engine, or I'm sorry, connect to this wire, and this is how the signal is gonna make it back to the dash. So that goes in position number six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Next is green. 
The green wire is our fan control. Uh, again, we're going to add a uh, wire that goes forward in our engine harness uh, to a radiator fan switch that will be, we could put it in the radiator, we could put it in the, um, uh, in a uh, hose adapter, uh, Hasport has been making for years, a hose adapter that goes in line inside your radiator hose and uh, that signal can then make it back to the um, to the radiator relay via this fan control wire. Now something else interesting about K-Series, uh, the fan control is also can be triggered at a preset temperature by the computer itself, but it's good to have a mechanical backup as well. Uh, and basically that gives you two ways that the uh, uh, fan can be activated. Either the engine sees it's too hot or the radiator fan switch sees it, the temperature is being too hot. Both those ways can then trigger the, the radiator fan and that's what this particular wire is for. And this one's gonna go in position number seven. All right, next we have white blue. This is our alternator charging lamp. Now, on a lot of adapter harnesses, this does not go through the C101 plug. Now, on a, uh, it actually winds up getting jumpered into a white blue wire in the harness. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to jumper that wire and bring it over to the C101 plug, which strangely enough is how they do it on the Type R motor as it comes in Japan. Don't ask me why they do it differently for the Type R, but they do. The American cars, again, that information is fed to the car via CAN communication. But of course, we've got an older car. It doesn't have CAN communication, so we need a wire to tell us when the alternator is not charging the battery. So that's what this is for. That is going to go in position of rate. Okay. Black yellow is next. This wire is considerably shorter. Uh, this wire is basically going to go to our air fuel sensor relay. So it's quite a bit shorter than the others. We're just gonna crimp on the one end for the moment. This goes in number nine. Just like the famous Beatles song, number nine, number nine. All right, next we have uh, number 10. That is a black white wire, and it happens to only be about 44 inches long. Uh, this wire is for our O2 sensor. This goes into number 10 and that completes the top row. All right, so number 13, that's the next one. So here we go, that's a yellow red wire. Again, our next wire is red yellow. This goes into position 13, 11, 12, 13. 
Very good. Next is yellow black. Now yellow black is actually going in position number 14 and 14 is actually got a different size, uh, different size pen on it. So uh, for a terminal, it's actually much larger. So we're gonna do, actually our next three wires are gonna be in this different style connector. Uh, if you look at our C101 plug, these four here that go 14 through 17, those are all much larger connectors and that's because they're higher voltage. Now this, this connector comes in two sizes, by the way. The terminal is set up to accept a small wire or a large wire. More on that in a second, but uh, of course, for this one, it's going to be the smaller wire. These are a little more hard to crimp, by the way. Or a little more difficult, I guess, would be the way to say that. In fact, what I suggest you do is strip it extra long. And then fold the wire over, making it a little bit thicker. And now when you crimp it together, it's going to be, give you a much better hold. And this one goes in position 14. All right, and now number 15, this is a white wire. Now this is actually winds up being two wires, one about 12 inches long and another one 44 inches long. These two wires, uh, one of them is gonna go to the air fuel ratio sensor, this one right here. And the other one is gonna to go to the air fuel ratio uh, sensor itself. So, I'm sorry, this goes to the air fuel sensor relay and this goes to the sensor. So that is stripped back. We're gonna combine them together. We're still gonna use a smaller connector. We're just gonna stack them up on top of each other and use our crimp to crimp down on both wires. All right, firm. Both wires are crimped in there. This is gonna go into number 15. All right. Number 16. That is a special wire. This is a much heavier gauge. In fact, it's a 14 gauge wire. We're gonna use our one terminal that has is made for a large wire and this particular one is our starter signal so again strip enough to go all the way through and then crimp it on
There we go. Crimped on. And snapped into place. All right, a couple more. Next is number 18, that is a yellow red wire. Here we go. Another 72 inch long wire. Again, number 18. Nineteen is a red wire. And again, a forty-four inch wire. This goes to the air fuel sensor again. is in place. Last, a black white wire. Another 72 inch long one. This particular one is goes to 12 volts switched. So this winds up uh, going to a 12 volt switch source. I think this powers the injectors. Uh, anyway, let's get this one in place. All right, they are all in place. I'm gonna go ahead and lock this in, in for now. By the way, I do actually plan on customizing this harness a little bit, but that'll be later on. Right now, I'm just trying to show you how to do a universal harness. So that is the first section done. All right, so, uh, the next is uh, the air fuel ratio sensor. That's this right here. Uh, it's gonna be connecting to one of the wires from our C101 plug, and then we're gonna be adding uh, some new wires as well. So, kind of nice then. Uh, this is like just a generic um, relay plug. Um, it actually uh, usually comes with either five or six terminals. You only use four. The way a relay works, by the way, is it either switches something on or switches something off. And uh, this is basically to turn the heater wire on to our uh, primary or air fuel ratio sensor. Well, we have one wire that's not what I thought it should be. Let's see where we went wrong with this thing. C101, number nine. Air fuel sensor relay, 85. Well, what we should have done is had done a slightly different crimp here. This 72 inch wire on the uh, air fuel ratio sensor that is then teamed up with this 12 inch wire that goes to E-plug. What I should have actually done is taken the 72 inch wire and crimped it over here with this wire. And then this 12 inch wire gets crimped with the wire that then loops to the E plug. I'm gonna redo all that real quick because I don't wanna have 
three wires crimped on one connector, which is what would happen if I did it the other way. So, you get a quick tool, take it all apart. That has been removed. Luckily, I have my spare. So let's rearrange everything. Start by cutting that off. We're going to take our 72 inch wire, combine it with this one. So both wires are joined together. We'll slide them back into position there. All right, now I need to take these two wires and combine them. Okay. All right, oops, I need a little more wire there. All right, fixed. Next one is 86, was, which is opposite that one. By the way, the 85 and 86 are the ones that actually turn everything on. So orange, and uh, that's this wire right here. And the way it works is uh, there's gonna be power applied to the black yellow wire. By the way, generally black yellow wires are turned on by the ignition. And uh, then the ground for this particular wire is gonna be provided by the computer. So this orange wire is gonna go back to the computer and when the computer sees everything's okay, it's going to uh, turn the air fuel sensor on by, by you know, putting a ground right here. And that'll in turn switch the relay on and give power to the uh, air fuel sensor heater wire. Again, on this one, again, I, I kind of double stripped it folded it back. I find on these relay connectors, it's better to have a kind of doubled over wire. It tends, it tends to work better. And that didn't crimp very well, but probably good enough. When I say it didn't crimp very well, I mean the part that actually crimped onto the wire didn't crimp as cleanly as I would have liked it to. But uh, the part that's on the wire is clean, so it, it'll be fine. All right, that's done. Next is 87. 87 is uh, the wire that's gonna go to what a device you're powering. So this particular one is uh, white. So that's gonna go to our C101 connector. So that wire is actually already on this connector. So we just need to strip it back. Again, double strip it. Then you pull the wire over.
Okay, 86. 86 is this top one that's perpendicular to the other two. And now number 30 is gonna go in. That is a white red wire. That is a 12 volt constant. And that wire, again, will be wired up to a part of the car that's always on 12 volts. And this is gonna wind up being the heater power. And so double strip it, fold it over. last plug is one that's actually parallel to 85 and 86 clips in place and that is in all right next is the e-plug there are some wires that are going to be connected to some of the pre-cut stuff here some of this is going to be run new uh, one of the things we're not going to be doing is this wire it goes in at e15 that's the electronic load detector the 80 uh, electronic load detector didn't come around until 88, so this car doesn't have it. Uh, and uh, essentially what we're gonna do is uh, in the software, uh, we're using Honda on this particular car, in software, we're just gonna switch that off. We're just gonna tell the computer that we don't care about electronic load detector. What that does, by the way, is if it sees a large amount of current draw uh, being done, it actually, will raise the idle a little bit so that the uh, uh, so that the uh, alternator you know doesn't drag the motor down. Uh, but again, it's uh, that is not available on uh, this car. It's actually a circuit that's usually in the fuse box that uh, checks for electronic load. So we're going to leave that particular wire out. Let's we'll start off with green yellow first. Green yellow wire is our fuel pump relay control. And uh, that's a 72 inch long wire. I forget why. Well, we'll figure that out as we put it all together. Uh, we need a slight different type pair of crimpers here for our ECU. And our stripping doesn't go quite as long as the other one did. This. Uh, particular terminal is a lot more, I don't know, delicate, smaller, whatever you want to call it. Um, and this particular set of crimpers crimps, uh, two crimps at the same time. So we're gonna preload this in our jaws. By the way, if we wanna know what tools I'm using, stick around to the end of the video and I will go over all the tools plus there will be a link down in the show notes. And um, well, there's like two little prongs, like guides almost that stick up on one side. And those are gonna go towards the top of our connector. So this is number one. So that's top left, goes right in and it clicks into place. You can't pull it back out. By the way, once you set this raised lock in, you won't be able to get that out at all. Right now, if you put it in the wrong area, you could actually go in and, and lift a little retaining tab in order to get this back out again. Uh, but hopefully we won't make any mistakes like that. All right, so that's the first one's done. So our next wire is uh, goes in position number seven. That's a red-yellow wire. This particular one is what's called the main relay control. Uh, normally what switches the main relay on and off is, this is actually normally grounded. So when you key the car on, it uh, automatically turns the main relay on. But because of the immobilizer, uh, they have a main relay con control on, uh, on these cars. This red yellow wire is our uh, main relay control. Uh, it actually goes back uh, 
from the e-plug over to the main relay to tell it just basically to turn on. So again, strip it back. We're gonna preload the terminal and the tool. Make sure it protrudes. Good to go. Number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Locked in. Okay. Next is an orange wire, and that's actually coming off our air fuel ratio uh, sensor relay. So strip it. And this one goes in number eight. All right. Next is black yellow. This one again is coming from our air fuel ratio sensor relay. Back. This goes in number nine, right next to number eight. All right. Next we go to 15, that's ELD. We're skipping that. Now is uh, the brake switch. Again, I think the brake switch actually has to do with uh, not so much whether or not the computer cares you're stopping, but uh, with there being demand on the brake booster, uh, when you press the brake, it's gonna be using vacuum. So I think it might actually boost idle as well. And again, this one is uh, number 22, which happens to be the lower left-hand corner. All right, next is blue. This is our tack signal. Instead of it getting a tack signal from the distributor as it does on this particular car, it gets its tack signal from the computer. In fact, the computers, uh, when you look at a wiring diagram and it says NEP, uh, somehow that means engine speed pulse. Not sure why, but that's what it means. So it tells you, gives you the correct readout for your distributor to read the engine speed. Let's see here, number 26, right there. Last is green orange and uh, green orange is the malfunction indicator lamp so we will be routing this wire to our dash so that we can get our uh, check engine light to work properly This is down in the opposite lower right-hand corner. 
that's locked in. Now, we're not gonna be adding anything to this, so I'm gonna go ahead and lock this connector down, and these are in there. Okie doke, next. We have our air fuel sensor plug. That is um, for our uh, air fuel ratio sensor. Now with the K swap, uh, depending on what ECU you're using, that's gonna determine the uh, air fuel ratio sensor you're using. We need one from an RSX because we're gonna be using a Honda that is an R modified RSX ECU. So right now we're going to be uh, connecting our uh, air fuel sensor wires to this. Now, uh, each one of those were pre-cut earlier, so we just need to dig them all out. Uh, we have in position number one a red wire, so let's look for that. There it is. Now these are a little bit different than the others. These actually get insulators on them because this is gonna be out in the engine bay, which is, of course is gonna be exposed to water, so it's gonna use a sealed connector. So first thing we do is slide our insulator on. Again, available through, of course, a Technic. Next, get our terminal. I need more wire. We're gonna crimp down the wire into the terminal first. Test it. Now slide the insulator in place. And these kind of are kind of cool uh, crimpers. They have just the simple round crimp that you would see on a factory crimp on an insulator. So you just tighten that down and it doesn't uh, be crimp it, you just basically roll crimps it. So now it's around the rubber insulator like that. Once we do that, we can slide it into position. Again, this is a female plug, female connectors. So basically it's gonna slide in from the backside, top left. Boom, done. Well, one down. Uh, red yellow wire. Find our red yellow wire. I'm gonna bring these wires all out together so that we're gonna have to run them together. All right, so insulator first. You can put the insulator on second, but usually that wind, you wind up jabbing yourself with these little wire ends. Terminal. Position number two, oh, head upside down, clicked into place. Very good. Now, white one. There it is right there. Yeah, we'll pull it out with the others. Three. And last, black white. 
It comes from C101 number nine. There we go. That's what I usually do. I usually strip it first and then jab myself in the finger with stray wire ends. I will not bleed tonight though. Okie dokie, that's in. Now we put our lock in. And that is done. Now, the harness is essentially done. I mean, right now all I need to do is really actually organize all the wires. Um, they'll come out as they, you know, group them with each plug that they need to be grouped with so that I can easily tell where the wire came from and attack them again. What we'll do is we'll go back, when we get the harness in the car, is we'll go back through here and figure out where they need to be terminated, which we'll add another column right here for specifically the, the Civic, where each one of them gets uh, terminated. But for right now, this is sufficient for me to uh, kind of stop right there and uh, we'll probably wind up trying it in the car before we loom it uh, specifically for, um, uh, for work with this particular swap. Uh, but this is good enough to, for right now. So let's lay this out and see what we have. I realize this harness looks kind of scary with all these wires, but in reality, just the way we built it, which is pretty much one wire at a time, when we install it in the car, it's gonna be the same way. What we'll do is figure out where each one of these wires needs to go, and then we'll individually put each one in its position. And it should turn out pretty clean, actually, when it's all said and done. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, this isn't over yet, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is get the engine in the car, and then we're going to take this harness and place it in the car with our engine harness and kind of start laying stuff out to go where it needs to go. And then once we're done with that, we'll tape it up so that it's organized, pull it out, loom it up, and stick it back in the car for good. Once we're done with this and having it fit nicely in the CRX, what I'll go ahead and do is I'll rewrite the notes with all the proper length wires on it and post it up there. So if you're interested in either building your own harness or modifying another harness, you should be able to do that with the instructions I'll be giving you. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot uh, for suffering through another boring wiring episode. Uh, but uh, this will have a happy ending. And if you like what you see, please think about subscribing. Uh, there will be more interesting videos coming up and a lot fewer about wiring. 
Thanks for joining me.